Happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Uber Cold Garage. On this week's episode, we're going to continue with the bug. Uh, we're going to start mounting all of the accessories, uh, some of the cooling parts, some of the oiling parts. Uh, starting to get this thing, all the tabs and everything, all situated. Uh, if you guys are interested in a swap or any of the parts that I use, uh, everything is down in the description below. Uh, my Amazon list and uh, my email is down there as well and my Instagram as well. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, if you're interested in any of the parts, go ahead and scroll through all of the parts lists and uh, all the links are down there. The car is definitely getting closer. Uh, I want to try and weld this thing out and get it all situated, get it ready for paint. Uh, that way I can paint the chassis and then uh, we can start getting this thing going. Try and get it. Uh, the ultimate goal is try and at least get it running by January. So not very much time left but uh, it's kind of crunch time for me. It's time to get this car going. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy the episode and hope you guys have a good Halloween. Uh, we'll see you at the end, guys. One more quick thing before we get into the video. Uh, last week we hit 500 subscribers. So it's a small accomplishment, but uh, it means a lot that you guys all are interested in the bug. I didn't really think the YouTube thing would go anywhere, but it seems like more and more people are starting to find it, and everybody on here seems to like what I'm doing. So thank you guys so much uh, for all the, sub the subs. Uh, it's very humbling, and uh, we'll keep growing the channel. If you guys have any... Uh, suggestions on how to make the videos better or what I need to do to push the videos further along make get you guys more interested in the videos uh, comment below and let me know uh, what you guys think so thank you guys very much let's get to the video so uh, I'm taking a break from the chassis for a minute uh, I'm doing a little bit of wiring so I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, I have my starter bolted in here. I have my main battery lead here that runs up to the front of the car. Uh, this one runs up to the alternator. So you can see here that I have uh, shielded wire over top of this. This is a two gauge battery cable. So I have this outside, shielding uh just so then it doesn't mess with any of the uh engine harness wiring make sure it doesn't mess with any of the sensors or anything like that so this is a shielded shielded uh cable that i had purchased let me grab this real quick so it just comes like this uh just flat it actually spreads open on the end so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shield this one as well uh, just because they're both, both of those lines are going to run up and, along with the uh, actual engine harness. So shielded cable on here just keeps the frequency down and all that stuff. So what I've done here is the shielded, shielded cable uh, comes off of here. And then it runs down into this one, which is the uh, ground for everything. So this is the main ground. Uh, this will run all the way up front and connect to the battery as well. So it runs into this. Uh, this next shielded piece uh, will run down and hit the actual terminal. I'm going to have a terminal block uh, down there. So instead of leaving this open, uh, shielded, 
I have uh, silicone uh, infused uh, heat shrink. So I'm going to run the heat shrink uh, over top of this entire thing. That way all of the shielded stuff is secure and it'll uh, help protect the wire as well. So it won't heat up next to the motor or anything like that. So I'm going to do that with this and then uh, make the next piece that goes down. And then this section of the uh, battery terminal stuff will be done. So alternator to starter, starter to battery. That way everything gets a, a high flow current uh, with some big gauge wire. So just a cool little nifty trick that I uh, came up with. I used kind of the same thing on the Gia when I originally did it. I was having interference problems with the ECU and this cable. So I actually ended up in the Gia just taking uh, stranded wire and wrapping this entire thing and then covered that and then covered it again with the uh, with this wire loom protector stuff. So it's kind of a cool little trick. Uh, if you guys are having problems with uh, any kind of electrical problems. And this is how it turned out. Uh, it worked out really, really nice. Uh, I have a second coat right here where it holds the uh, grounding strap. Uh, it all worked out really, really nice. Uh, the terminals look good. You can see that the silicone pushed out. Uh, so this is a nice, really nice sealed, thick, uh, very strong cable. I don't think I will ever have to worry about this at all. So, uh, I'm going to still do the, uh, the wrap over top of this just to, uh, cover it up. That way it's not super bright red running through the, uh, entire engine bay. So I'm going to... Uh, go ahead and do this one next all the way down. Uh, I'm going to have a, a block, uh, somewhere right here where it'll, uh, have a disconnect right here. That way I can pull that section of wire out and leave the stuff that goes up to the front uh, the grounding one will have a ground here too that will be a chassis ground off of that and then another lead will run up to the battery. So uh, that'll cover the engine ground, the chassis ground, and it'll all connect back to the battery as well. Uh, that way everything has a good thick solid ground to it. Uh, I don't want any wiring issues with this car so uh should be good on battery cables and grounding straps so looking pretty good so far well since i was uh doing a little bit of wiring i figured this was kind of on the shelf driving me nuts it was a big old huge rat's nest uh, when I initially did the wiring harness for the Gia, I knew that it was going to go into the bug eventually, so I didn't really uh, try too hard on keeping things neat. I just kind of taped it all together and threw it in the car. Uh, I didn't cut any of the leads or anything like that because I didn't want to come up short uh, when it swapped over to the bug. So as you can see here, uh, I have two very large bundles of wire. Uh, these are all spare circuits uh, that do various things in the computer system. Uh, so a lot of these circuits, uh, there's actually like four extra ignition circuits uh, for uh, of the injector circuits, there's quite a bit more that I can do with this uh, harness. So as you can see, there is a ton of wiring here. Uh, this stuff here is like fuel pump and 
RPM signal and all of that stuff up here in, in this bulk of wire here. So that all stuff goes to the front of the car. Uh, these are all the grounding circuits. Those will go directly to the battery. Uh, this is another one that goes up to the front of the car. And then this little group of wire here is fuel injector and uh, ignition coils. So all of these go in one bundle. And then I'm still going through some of this stuff here. Like these two plugs are the uh, VVT for the Subaru motor. I think it's ADVS or something like that. I always get those letters mixed up, but uh, I still have to clean up this section of wiring, but you can see uh, everything here is plugged in. So I have one loom that runs over to the passenger side. And then this one here goes up to the driver's side. This is all the stuff that I still have to go through. Uh, this stuff is crank position, uh, throttle position, cam signals, uh, cam angle sensors, the knock sensor, and a couple others. Uh, the cool thing with this wiring harness that I have here is I can actually tap into the stock transmission stuff. So like the neutral safety switch and the uh, variable speed sensor inside the trans so i'm gonna pull those wires through i gotta read the book and figure out which wires i can use for those signals uh and those will actually relay to the uh tablet and the dash that i'm using so i know wiring is boring for you guys um uh, i'll try and keep it very minimal i love wiring uh it's i don't know kind of therapeutic to me so that's kind of why i'm taking a break from the chassis for a minute getting my head clear and just tinkering around with wiring uh it's not something that i need to do right this second but it'll help me along uh in the future that way when the car is ready i can just plug it in and fire it up so you saw me start welding in brackets for the cooling system stuff uh i welded uh this bracket to the cage uh it's just a half moon that will clamp i still have to make the piece that slides over this part to clamp it in and that'll get rubber all the way around it uh and then the overflow tank is down here so it's pretty cool a uh, nice overflow tank. I can add a little bit of coolant to it. There's a drain on the bottom. I'm going to end up putting a valve on it and then a hose that runs over uh, down underneath the car. And then the hose in between is a cheap braided fuel hose from Amazon that was no good. Couldn't use it for anything but it looks really cool. Uh, it's good, nice braid. So what I did, uh, instead of having frayed, frayed lines uh, getting poked all the time, uh, I took some heat shrink and put some heat shrink over it and left it past, past the, uh, the actual hose and heat shrinked it down and then it kind of sucked down over the hose and then I uh, got a couple hose clamps on there. So that loops down, up, 
and back in so it'll suck in coolant if it needs it or spit some out if it doesn't need it. Uh, also, with the uh, hose clamp on here, I added another nut and a rubber uh, rubber holder. So that, uh, it's kind of really hard to see, but that holds the hose right where it needs to be and it's away from everything so it's not going to vibrate and make a hole anywhere in that hose, which is pretty cool. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure with the level hose. Uh, I'm going to see how it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll just put caps in here. Uh, I'm kind of hoping it'll work because that would be kind of nice to uh, know know the height on that. Uh, so cooling system is going to come out of the top into this and then drop down, run through the heater channels. Uh, and then it 45s up this way, follows this channel up, and then uh, goes up into the radiator from there. And same thing on the other side, it'll drop down, run through, and then hit the bottom of the motor right here. Uh, I am going to make, uh, two tabs that are welded in the bottom of the heater channel that'll accept, um, hose clamps. So I'll take a little rubber, little tiny bit of rubber, um, hose, slide that down underneath and then, uh, slide a hose clamp over it and that'll clamp and hold the actual coolant pipes. Uh, where they need to be inside the heater channel and then back here uh, basically all of this aluminum pipe uh, and this aluminum pipe and the one that goes over there will get heat wrapped uh, that way I can try and keep out as much heat in the engine bay as possible the headers are wrapped the full exhaust will be wrapped um, so I want to try and keep as much heat out of the engine bay as possible uh, I'm probably actually going to add two small scoops uh, in the very front part of the diffuser that kind of scoop in air. And then the two side scoops, uh, those will scoop in air into the engine bay as well. And then the rear apron and some of the rear fender has uh, dimple dyed holes in it for heat exit. And it's also going to have a deck lid standoff as well. So try and get as much heat or air in and heat out. So that way the engine bay stays nice and cool. So coolant pipes are coming along. I still have to bend this one. Uh, as you can see right here, this one is already bent and in place. Uh, and then I just need to bend this one. And coolant pipes are basically done. So, we'll, uh, I'm going to finish off coolant pipes and then uh, get back to the roll cage stuff. Okay, so what you saw me weld just now was the bracket for the oil filter re relocation. Uh, I'm gonna end up grinding these welds down, getting them all nice and smooth. That way it looks like this is one piece. Uh, the welder was not happy. Uh, there was some oil on this piece. Uh, and it just wasn't having it. So I'm gonna grind down these, make them all smooth, make sure it looks all uniform and in one one piece uh, if it doesn't work then i'll clean it up and re-weld it uh so i have a plate down here that bolts into the oil filter location and that'll run up into the filter and then 
run through the filter, come back up. Uh, I'm gonna put a thermostat right here. So thermostat will plug into that and then the other side of the thermostat will plug back into the oil filter. And then this side of that thermostat will go over to the oil cooler uh, with a fan on it. I'm gonna make make some brackets that kind of hold hold these lines away from everything. They're gonna kind of sit right in the middle. Uh, so if I ever have to pull the motor, uh, I'll just pull these two bolts and the two bolts that I'll have in the uh, thermostat and then pull the lines off of the oil cooler and then the, all of that will come out with the motor. So that turned out really good. It was uh, definitely one thing that I wasn't 100% sure to do with. Uh, as far as you're looking right here, it looks like this is really close to the uh, header. It is not, I mean, I got two inches or so. I'm also going to get a 100 and, I think a 135 degree fitting that'll actually push that up further and that'll actually even get it further away than the, than it already is. So, uh, got new fittings on the way for that. I got the thermostat on the way. I got more, a couple more fittings and a little bit more hose. And then I can make those up, get everything oil-wise situated that I need. And then uh, we'll move on to the next bit. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you this week. Uh, next week, we're going to continue on the bug. Uh, definitely want to try and start building suspension parts, uh, finishing off the cooling stuff, and getting all these little itty-bitty tabs throughout the entire car uh, ready to go. I need to definitely make the seat mounts. Uh, that way I can start getting the floor in and get that all sanded down, seam sealed in, welded in. Uh, and then from there, uh, I can start f getting the car further along. And we're looking pretty good so far. So there's quite a bit of little tabs that need to go in. Uh, whole bunch of stuff so just gonna start working my way through all of the tabs and stuff for the chassis and then uh, we'll sand it down and get it in primer and hopefully paint here pretty soon and we will see you guys on the next one you guys have a good Halloween uh, stay safe with your families and you all have a good one peace out guys